That would be a perfect moment for like a stutter close up where it's just like, tung, 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 and then you just see his eyes like. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to another Dear Shandy Bachelor recap, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. I'm sorry. <laughs> How are you today? I'm doing good. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny when your voice cracks when you're an adult. Yes. Why it does really, that happen? It's just, it just reminds you. It's like almost like your, your, your soul is like, watch it. <laughs> you're not that cool. Get over yourself. Yeah. Actually, we were eating dinner at a restaurant and there was a guy who was speaking very loudly, too loudly, if I'm honest, at a restaurant. Oh, yeah. And he had this affect to his voice where he was talking kind of like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was fascinated by it. I was like... That he's had that he does that every time he opens his mouth. Like there's no way that's his natural speaking voice. Yeah, he's trained his his voice to sound like a guy who's a little tougher than he is. Natural I think a lot voice. of people do that. And I think it's a huge energy suck. I oh. think your body's constantly working in overdrive because they can never stop sounding like that. Yeah. It's oh. work. I mean, that's what I felt when I heard him. I was like, let go. Yeah, it's a performance. It's like going, it's like if you're a, a Broadway performer and you're like, oh, okay, I got to get up for the show. Got to do, you know, Cats for the 50th time. Yeah. And you get up for it, you do it, but then you go out for drinks with your friends and yeah. castmates and you wake up and you have some coffee and breakfast and you enjoy your day. And, you know, you don't have to do it all the time. Yeah. He's on stage his whole life. Totally. Can we talk about Cats, by the way? Yeah, let's talk about it. Cats, I think. The weirdest musical ever. <laughs> Yeah, no one talks about how weird it is. <laughs> yeah, everyone just likes memory and yeah. a couple of other tunes. And yeah. they're like, we'll all accept that Cats is just a good musical, famous musical, but it's so weird. Let's be honest about Cats. Andrew Lloyd Webber, greatest musical composer of all time. Arguably. No question. What? Arguably. I mean, what, Leonard Bernstein, he, only, he didn't, he wasn't as prolific though. Oh, I was thinking the, com whoever, who was the composer of Les Mis? Oh, also not as prolific. I mean, the fact that I can't think of his name off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, exactly. Okay, 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 okay go so, on. So my point is, Andrew Lloyd Webber, Cats, I think, I think, was a miss for him. Uh-huh. I think it was totally insane. Yeah. Made no sense. And there was one and a half great songs. Yes. So why is Cats so famous? It's so famous because it's so weird. Yeah. And That's why. Well, and I think Memory. And Memory. Is such a good song. It's like he built the entire musical around Memory. He memory. was like, I have a ma like a magical song. This song is too good to just throw into another great musical I already have. I'm going to build a whole musical around this song. You know what? I'm going to take it a step further. I think they commissioned him to do like a like some cat themed musical. Uh-huh. And he, he like Took totally, he literally. went out drinking, he went on like a bender for like two months. He was like, I don't care. I can do this. And then like, it was like the last week and he's like, oh crap. Yeah. And he wrote the musical in like literally 45 minutes. Okay. The rest and of it. And then sent it in. They're like, they're like, what the hell is this? He's like, trust me, that song is going to carry the whole thing. They're like, but this is insane. This makes no sense. He's uh -huh. like, trust me. I'm Andrew Lloyd Webber. I know how to do music. Yes. Okay. <laughs> We got to the bottom of that. So, what one. was your point about Cats? I was going to say I think it's an overrated musical. It's just about the song. But you know what? That song makes it all worth. You it. know what it was when I watched it, and then I swear we're going to get started. It was talent. You're watching people be talented, which is great and inspiring sometimes. Absolutely. And I just want to add one last thing before we're definitely finished. Yeah. It was such a bad musical that they tried to make a movie out of it. And that movie ended up being literally laughably. the worst movie of all time. Yes, laughably bad. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's get recapping. <laughs> so that was our housekeeping today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get Some going? Important stuff. Recapping hometowns, Andy. Your hometowns. favorite week. Yeah. We're being sarcastic. Andy yeah, doesn't like hometowns. Hometowns is a lot of going through the motions. You know, I had convinced myself that I liked hometowns when I, I watched all the years prior to yeah. recapping with you. But now that I watch with you, I'm like, uh, hometowns might be a little overrated. Hometowns is definitely overrated. Hometowns, I think, is a necessary evil oh, more than wow. something we should look forward to. Ooh, ouch. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll start off with Kelsey A's hometown in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. I thought this was really well edited, oh, yeah. the opening. Like, they know how to start an episode now. Mm -hmm. Even the cold open, which we're not going to talk about, the, the one with the sort of Godfather-like oh, music with Maria's yeah. father. What a great way to open Funny, the episode. Great. Everything's great. The music is, the music is a, like... Such a step I up. could listen to The Bachelor. I don't even listen to the words yeah. or watch it. I could just listen to the score and be like, yeah, it's not bad. And even this song, they're playing some New Orleans song. It had New Orleans in the title. Yeah. And then when she jumps into his arms, there's a cymbal crash. Like a that symbol. lands 
right on it. I'm so impressed with these guys who can catch women. I my legs are too thin. <laughs> if it if 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 they did that jump on me, it would be the sound of a car crash. <laughs> And right off the bat, I have my best dress of the episode, Kelsey wearing her white slash cream jumpsuit mm. sleeveless. It has a collar. It has a belt. It's oh, very yeah. 70s. Mm -hmm. How fabulous did oh, she look I in this? I loved it. Yes. She, and it was not trying too hard, but it still had style. Her hair was down and flowing. I mean, she just looked amazing. She looked like a movie star. Yeah. If you commit 70s, it usually... <laughs> Wait, Andy, is your low voice an affect? Are we going to keep that? Maybe we should have a voice crack watch. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let my voice be, I think I'm going the opposite. I have a tendency to do that. I tone down everything. Okay. So maybe I'm going for a higher voice. I'm going to just embrace my low voice. Oh, so you feel self-conscious about your low voice? Yeah. I always have felt my voice was too low and I think I'm like the guy in the restaurant, but I'm the opposite. Oh. I'm going to go full love voice. Watch what happens. Just go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. So they ride a tandem bike and see lots of butterflies. Which... Yeah, butterflies. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, butterflies. <laughs> and it's sweet because... Can we talk about butterflies? I'm back to my fake voice. Butterflies <laughs> are the most ridiculous thing. Okay. So I agree butterflies are beautiful, but I respect all insects. I okay. think all insects are beautiful okay. except cockroaches. They're an abomination. Yes. Just absolutely disgusting. Okay. But everything else is beautiful. If butterflies, if you took the wings off butterflies, I know. forget about the wings, they are actually a very hideous bug. <laughs> and I find it hilarious that, that I'm a, uh, can I just say women in general? Can I, can, I, uh, can I say Can I say this? I can say this. Say it, Andy. I don't know if anyone's going to be offended by this, but women love butterflies. They do. They love them. Yeah. They draw them. They have tattoos of them. They talk about them. They're, they're spirit animals for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, butterflies are disgusting bugs with beautiful wings. Yeah. And if they didn't have those wings, women would run from them. <laughs> Could you imagine a woman? You see these these Instagrams of women with like butterflies, one sitting on their head, yeah, and their yeah. hands. They've got one on their nose, yeah, and, and they're all near smiling. Us, there's the butterfly observatory. Butterfly you can observatory. Go in there. Yeah. It's packed. You can't even get in there on a weekend. Yeah. And if they were just sitting there with all the butterflies without wings, they would be. <laughs> it would be like something out of like a Saw movie. So I just want to make a point that I think there is an excessive amount of lookism in the insect world. Okay. And I think that butterflies, yes, they are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. But I think all insects, except cockroaches, mm -hmm. are actually in their own way beautiful. Okay. And they should be respected uh, more. Okay. Well, Kelsey A. associates butterflies with her mother. Andy, don't you feel bad now? No, I, I, I think, yeah, I feel bad. <laughs> I do feel bad. Okay. So they see butterflies, and so she's moved by this. Yeah. They see a bride getting photographed in the park and then chat about that. But you know what I will say? Butterflies do um, take nectar from flowers. Yes. Which is a beautiful thing. Yes. So they have another thing that's beautiful about them. Okay. okay. Did you get that off your chest? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm done. So they see a bride getting photographed in the park, then chat. She expresses fear about getting heartbroken and... Joe, I was watching like a hawk. I was like, are we going to see some hint in Joey's reply? Like a, a twitch in his yeah. eye, like a curl of the corner of his mouth, but nothing. Joey is officially the hardest bachelor to read ever. Ooh, incredible. He says he understands. He's scared too. All he can ask is for her to be honest with herself. He's so ready and wants the person he's with to be ready too. So he does his usual Joey, like really correct answer, but he also sort of sidesteps really answering or making her feel a lot better. I was really watching. Yeah, he's a great player. He's a great tennis player. Yeah. He knows how to volley. Oh. He knows how to keep the volley going. Oh, you think that that's... Uh... Does it all the time. With parents, with with women. That's true, actually. He, he never doesn't return a volley. Yes. Ever. Even when Maria broke down, tried to play him. Yeah. He returned to play. It was a winner, right down the line. <laughs> Are you talking low? No. I'm just, I'm just taking it down a notch. Okay. This is my real voice. Get used to it. <laughs> okay. They stroll around town and she takes them to a bar called Molly's and her mom comes up here. I love this. He says, I'm sure today is hard. How are you doing? So mm. he, in, in the context of missing her mother, I thought this was really sweet. Yeah. Kelsey cries here, says it feels like her mother should be there. Mm. And now it's the evening we meet her father, Mark. And Andy, you were like golden bachelor. Oh man, or a silver bachelor. So yeah, 
Is, could, there should be a silver bachelor. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. like silver would be m- even more interesting maybe than golden in some ways. Oh, I would 100% watch Silver Bachelor. Yeah. Her father was like... I mean, kind I'm, of studly. I kind of had a crush on her father. <laughs> Me too. Kelsey chats with her sister Taylor, and I have to point out that I think her sister Taylor looks like Pam from The Office. Oh, totally. And seems like Pam from The Office. Yeah, she even behaves a bit like yeah, her. Yeah, totally. Yeah, which is a compliment, by the mm-hmm. way. Yeah. Okay, so Kelsey's father, Mark, and Joey chat. Mark asks how Joey knows when he finds the right person, considering there's all these women. And Joey says his feelings are real. They make sense. He's very hopeful. He's holding back because he knows to protect Kelsey's heart. Mm-hmm. Again, all the right answers. Mark in his ITM says, a man deserving of Kelsey is one that she picks. Wow. I loved that. Mm. I love it when a parent respects their child's decision making, lets them feel their feelings, lets them go and have crazy experiences, like go on The Bachelor and doesn't judge them for it. I just loved this. Yeah. It's like a man deserving of Kelsey. It's like such a perfect one size fits all answer. It's like if she picks him, I trust her judgment. He's right for her. Right, But she is the person who knows how to pick because of him. Yes. It's like a vicious cycle. Yeah. I, yeah, I trust my own parenting, yeah. basically. It's not chicken or egg. No. It's egg then chicken. <laughs> yes. Kelsey and her father talk now, beautiful conversation where she basically says she's looking for someone who treats her the way he treated her mother. And I got to say, what an impact mm. a good father has on oh a human. My Lord. You knew Kelsey had a good father before you met her father. Yes. And then when you met him, you're like, wow. Yes. Was I right about that? <laughs> that's, that's your first thought. Do you pat yourself on the back? Yeah. Yeah, really. Small <laughs> victories. And now Joey and Kelsey chat outside. They agree it was a great day. They kiss goodbye. And overall, we agreed this was classic first hometown material, meaning it's the one that goes yeah, so easy. smooth. Andy, you said she's too perfect. Too perfect. What does that mean, Andy? I don't know what that means, but I know in my heart what it means. I can't articulate it, but okay. you know. Well, I think she's perfect for Bachelorette. She's a perfect Bachelorette. Yes. But she might be too perfect for Joey. I think Joey wants a little extra flavor in that meal. Mm -hmm. Like she's like, you know what she is? She's like a Norman Rockwell Thanksgiving dinner. Yes. Turkey is golden brown. Everything's cooked perfectly. All the fix-ins are there. Just look delicious. Yeah. But, But Joey wants something weird. Oh. He just wants a little something in the mix. Well, people disagree with us. I mean, oh. people really disagreed with us in the comments last week. They, yeah. they, a lot of people think that it's Kelsey A or that they have the best connection. It's the easiest connection. So I don't agree. Okay. I mean, I, I may be proven wrong, but but I Well, we think... were proven wrong in what ended up happening from the four to three. I mean, I love being proven wrong. I It always excites me. It keeps me on the edge of my seat. I just still feel how we felt about Kelsey A last week, which is to say, I think that she doesn't bring out this extra edgy side of him that I, that I would like to see. He wants the funk. He wants the stink of the stinky cheese. Yeah. 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 Or the, and also I think that they have levity, but I just don't, it's not as like, there's not like that electricity in the air of like, of humor going back and forth that I look for. But you know, I thought he had that with Maria and then he sent her home. So, you know, you end up looking. Maria was complicated. Chelsea is the least complicated of all the contestants. Yeah. But I think that he, if I got into Joey's head, I want to get really meta here. Uh huh. I would think that Joey is thinking to himself, I wish I wanted this woman more. Okay. That's what he's thinking. He's like, I wish I really wanted this more. Mm-hmm. I wish I felt that thing with Kelsey. Like he wants it to be Kelsey. Yeah. But he knows it's Daisy. Okay. You're giving away your predictions, Andy. Uh, oh, who knows? Maybe something will change before the end of the recap. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we said last week that Joey can recognize what an amazing package Kelsey A yeah. is, but she might just not be perfect for him. And I've been that person in dating before where so you don't you don't even want to let the person go because you know what a good find they are. Yeah. You just know it's not yeah, your puzzle Yeah, you're like, this piece. should be right. What's yeah, wrong you, with me? Yes. What's wrong with me that yes. this isn't right? Totally. I think that he wants to want her. Factor is the meal that you always dreamed about to have <laughs> in your fridge when you're hungry after work or any time during the day or whatever. <laughs> Oof. It's been a long day. <laughs> you know, it's fine. That could totally work in cats. <laughs> oh, yeah. Totally. All that needs is dance moves. Yeah, you're just some cat. Doing like- <laughs> <laughs> okay, so factor. 
<laughs> factor in your f- <laughs> it's always the leg the leg goes straight up oh uh, so factor is it is yes what'd you call it a dream in your fridge i don't remember what i called it blacked out during that jingle <laughs> But it's true to open a fridge and see factor meals, which, by the way, arrive never frozen. They're fully prepared, chef prepared, dietitian approved. Mm -hmm. You open your fridge and it's like, oh, because you see that it's like a dream. And then when you think it's going to be there and it's not, it is. It's like a nightmare. Uh, But maybe that's going a little (laughs) too far. You know, factor is great. It is. But the absence of factor is not a nightmare. The absence of factor is a disappointment. Yes. Because what factor provides is a convenient affordable, yes. delicious, and unbelievably low maintenance to put food in your mouth mm-hmm. that will make you happy. You don't need to spend time in the kitchen cooking. Also, I love how they take into account different dietary preferences. Mm-hmm. Let's say you are vegan. Let's say you are keto. Let's say you are watching your calories. They have options for you. Yeah. Factor has figured out how to satisfy any dietary restriction and make it taste good. Yes. And make it so convenient. And sophisticated. We've talked before for about how the food is like restaurant taste, yeah. restaurant quality. You know what we're talking about. It has that extra bit of love. Yeah. Sometimes I'm actually eating a factor. I'm like, you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to go that far, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> so head to factormeals.com slash Shandy50 and use code Shandy50. That's Shandy50 to get 50% off. Again, that's code Shandy50 at factormeals.com slash Shandy50 to get 50% off. Okay, so now we have Rachel's hometown in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Andy, you said every time they're together, it feels like a tour guide starting a tour. Yeah. Do you want to explain? Do you not feel that? I know kind of what you mean. Yeah, it just feels like... She and Joey both know that this isn't it. Okay. And they're both going through the motions. I think they're friends. They're good friends. Yeah, we agree that we think that they're friends. Yeah, I think they really like each other in Uh a friend way. And I think they're both going through the motions. And I feel like whether they know it or not, I think Joey knows it. Joey definitely knows it. Rachel probably knows it, but is kind of going through the motions, Uh right? And by knowing that this isn't it, and going through the motion, she's kind of forced into this position of narrating Ooh. as opposed to really emoting. Okay. And I get this tour guide feeling. Okay. It's always like, I'm really happy you guys are here. Yeah, you yeah. know, we're going to see a lot of exciting stuff today. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. look over to your left, you're going to see something that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to get there soon. Don't get too excited. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of like a prepared speech all the time. Okay. It feels like she's just like, I know I have to say these things. But there's no real feeling behind it because she's forced okay. to not engage fully with the person she knows she's not going to be with. Okay. So I actually think that this hometown gives us all the backstory to Rachel that I felt I needed. Because I agree. For me, the relationship between Rachel and Joey has felt mostly platonic yeah. and not just not feelings based. Like you said, mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not getting this like. There's no passion. Yeah. And there's no like, I need you. But what we learned in this hometown is that her parents are, if anything, kind of putting a damper on feelings because they don't want her to get hurt. Yeah. That's the theme of this whole date. So we'll go through it and I'll give examples along the way. But I think that when you're raised by parents like that, and I say this because I actually found, I don't want to use the word triggering lightly, but as someone who I think is pretty emotional, I consider myself now an emotional person. I would not have eaten thought that even five years ago i feel like rachel is emotional for her family right and it's maybe a bit of a wild child she's the one that goes on the bachelor and does this crazy thing even when she sits down with her father she's like i'm doing a crazy thing again i really saw my my parents in this hometown Mm. and in a way that made me want to be like don't listen to them rachel you do you like feel your feelings right yeah no i hear what you're saying i think that she doesn't have like she hasn't tapped into that yet and she's working on it well i think that she has a permanent wall up in addition to the fact that i think her and Joey, they both know that this probably isn't it. Yeah, I, know, yeah. I know Joey knows it, yes. isn't it? Uh-huh. And I think she probably is on to that. But I think she has a permanent wall up. And that wall manifests itself in kind of a hedging manner about her engagement with romantic partners. Totally. That's my guess. Okay. All right. I, I mean, I agree. When meeting Rachel's mother, Noella, Joey nails the hand gesture thing that was a sign of respect and everyone cheers i thought this was really cute of course joey would nail that noella says she liked how joey was game to eat the pig's ear he was really respectful andy you said respectful to the pig Hmm. always imagine it's a human always it's good it's a good way to do this always imagine it's a human how would that land oh andy would you be feel respected if someone ate your ear so dark i'm just saying so dark 
Rachel and her father, Hakeem, chat now. Rachel says, Joey's good at noticing if something bothers her. He's good at slowing her down. I loved this. Mm -hmm. The the self-awareness in this observation. She says, you know what happens at the end of this? And her father's like, no, well, I've never seen the show. (laughs) Unbelievable. Oh, okay. Okay, tough Andy, guy. Andy, you loved this. I mean, so, like, first of all, he didn't need to say that. He clearly was saying that for his buddies. Okay. You know, like, literally, the leader of the Hell's Angels knows what happens at the end of The Bachelor. <laughs> like, it's okay. Yeah, he tells her, and this is, this is what got me. He tells her to be even keel. He says, don't get too high or too low. Hmm. I, I, uh, to me, I don't, I don't like this. I think she's allowed to not be even keel well, yep. and to experience all the emotions. And, and, and why do we get the Rachel that's the tour guide? Look yes. at her father. Yes. Don't be too high. Don't be too low. Just tell them where the sights are. Yeah. Smile. Oh. And get on to the next group. Yeah, I feel like we saw, you know, that polished side of Rachel that I find myself wanting more from her mm-hmm. emotionally. We saw where that comes from in this hometown. And I... The reason I'm pointing it out as much as I am is because I find it so relatable. I really think that I have spent much of my adult life struggling with the same thing because of my own family dynamic. And so I really, I just wanted to shake her and be like, feel the feelings, girl. Like, feel the highs, feel the lows. Like, there's no wrong feeling. Like, it's all part of living. Well, that's the thing. I feel like, like in business, for example, you should keep your emotions in check. Of course. That's where you should be restrained. Yeah. But in love and in friendships and stuff like that, you shouldn't be matter of fact when emotions come into play. You should just let them be there. Yes. You shouldn't go nuts. I mean, you should always check yourself. You don't want to end up in like like, Rachel doesn't have the ability to go nuts. She she doesn't have the ability to go nuts. Just don't be so matter of fact. Be like, you know what? This isn't matter of fact. Uh This is real. This is like, I, I may be in love with this, this man. Yes. Let me just feel. It. let me just do it yes just do it all in the interest of not getting hurt again yeah like even getting hurt you recover hopefully and then you are you know so much more about yourself and what you're looking for all the things you know what is in the interest of not getting hurt again what is a scab do you want to be a scab <laughs> oh scabs are crazy crazy your body's like you know, we, we got to hurt here. We got to hurt here once. We got to hurt here twice. We're putting up a wall. A scab. And that works. But you don't want to be that as your soul. Oh, do you mean a scar? A scab. Like when you get it, when you yeah, get a I know cut what a scab and it turns is. into a scab. But if you cut it again. No, no, it turns into a scar. Well, it turns, First into, it a turns scar, into a scab. A and sca- the- scar. <laughs> There's two different things. All right? So first there's the scab and then it gets all dry and crusty and comes off. Right. Or in my case, I, I sometimes, you know, pick it off a little bit yeah, earlier yeah. than I no, should. You like to pick things way too early. <laughs> yeah. People are like, please stop. <laughs> but a scar. Okay. So and then it's like tougher. It's not like you're saying a scar. <laughs> when I think of a scar, I think of like it's it's the first the, the, it's the thing that happens with it with a really deep cut. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. It turns into a scar. But if you get like a, a not too deep cut, that's not going to scar. But then you get a cut there again uh-huh. and again. Eventually, your skin's like, okay, we're not going to form a full scar, but we're going to form a permanent scab. It's a really? scarb. I is this true? I don't know what you're talking I, in about. In my body, it's true. Where? Where on your body is this true? Where do you have a scarb? <laughs> it's a scar. You're talking about a scar, not a scab. <laughs> what? Shall we move on? Oh, I have a scarb on my knuckle. Okay, let's see. No. That's a callus. Callus. <laughs> That's what it is. Callus. Okay, so all this time you meant callus, so, not scab. Okay, so take two. Do you want to be a callus? <laughs> okay, okay. So Rachel's mother and Joey chat now. The gist here is she's saying they're all skeptical. And even though Joey says all the right things, uh, the theme is Rachel's been hurt. They don't want to see it happen again. And now Rachel and her mom chat that just here again is he seems like a nice guy, but and guard your heart, sweetheart. You know, hearts aren't that important to protect. Hearts are very tough. You know, a heart literally keeps beating pretty much after your brain dead. You can take a heart out of someone's body, literally rip someone's heart out and it'll keep beating for like a few minutes. I feel like to encourage her to guard her heart 
this much. It's not showing enough trust in her ability to pick someone who won't hurt her. You have to eat a meal to enjoy it. You have to swallow it. Yes. You can't just chew it. Yeah. Not a swallow. Or just smell it. And you never know what's going to happen when you swallow. Who knows what's in that food? <laughs> but most of the time, it's okay. Oh, my God. Like one place near us, we won't name the name, but you bit into a oh dish and there was glass. A big piece of glass. A big and piece of And I remember crunching on it. And, and you know what's interesting about glass is the first immediate crunch, I was like, oh, that's an interesting texture. I'm kind of into that. And then I was like... Oh, wait a minute. That's glass. Oh. And if I had swallowed that, there's a decent chance I think I'd be dead. It was a big piece. And they didn't even give us no, they refund. No, they refunded the meal. Are you sure? Yeah, they were pretty apologetic. I think they were afraid we were going to leave a bad Yelp review, which frankly we probably should have done, but we didn't. We really should have. Yeah. yeah. Big piece of glass. Huge piece of glass. Yeah. I guess glass is vegan. No, don't do that. You're going to name the place. <laughs> <laughs> On 80. No, I'm just kidding. And now Rachel's father and Joey chat. Again, we hear him say, I don't want to see my daughter hurt ever again. And Joey says all the right things. Andy, you said Joey's on autopilot now. Oh. Joey. And he does autopilot better than any bachelor I've ever seen. Yes. He was born for this. It's not just auto, it's a, because most autopilots for bachelors, it's a lot of like, 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 mm -hmm. like, like and this filling. and like, and yeah, and feelings and great. And I, she's great. And I'm great. And who knows? And li who knows? like, 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 <laughs> like, like, maybe whatever. You know what I mean? Joey's, he's giving a speech to the UN. Mm. It's perfect. Everything he says is perfect. Doesn't miss a beat. And he's literally thinking about like what outfit he's going to wear tomorrow at a rose ceremony. Like he's not even there. That's how good he is. I don't think he's at oh, somewhere he is, else. He, I'm telling you, Joey is a tennis player. You think every <laughs> time a tennis player is having like a 40 shot volley? Uh huh. Like, do you think every single shot they're like, okay, what am I going to do with this shot? No, it just becomes instinct. They're just like, they're, they don't even, they're not even there. Oh, no, I think they are there. I think that it takes presence, it takes being in the moment. But he's so in the moment, he's not there. <laughs> Okay, so Joey asks for Rachel's father's blessing, and he says, if that moment comes, Rachel has his number. That's what her father says. Mm. Now, Rachel and her sister chat. She says that mom and dad are saying, protect your heart. But what if, you know, she let go? Maybe something amazing could happen. In her ITM, Rachel says she's learned she can be cautious, but she's also allowing herself to feel what she's feeling. And I was like, yes, girl. Mm. Yes. I loved how that was still her takeaway after getting the same messaging over and over again from our parents of be cautious, protect your heart. I never want to see you hurt again, that sort of thing. I read yesterday a great quote, which was comfort is a cheap, no, comfort is the worst addiction and a cheap ticket to depression. Oh man, I hit home. Oh, Oof. I loved that. Yeah. And it's so true. And I just love that she's going outside of her comfort zone and feeling the feelings, yeah. even if it means she gets hurt, like yes. she will come comfort out on top. Comfort should be a delicacy. Yes. Finally, they chat outside and Rachel is crying a lot here. And even this, she stresses. She's like, I don't normally cry like this. I don't normally cry. And even this, I want to be like, cry, girl. Just yeah. cry. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I like that about Kelsey. A. She just cries. She cries. Yeah. When she's feeling emotional, she cries. She doesn't apologize for it. She cries through her words. She'll yeah. be mid-sentence and tears are streaming down her face and she just gets the sentence out. And I wanted Rachel to not you know, have a disclaimer for her tears. She's like, oh, I only normally cry when animals die. And of course I understand, like I said, where this comes from, because I'm sure in her family, crying a lot is probably seen as yeah, a lot or an overreaction. She's excuses for her emotions. Yeah, yeah. Not necessary. Totally. She says she has said she's falling for him, but she is now officially falling in love with him. And he says her family is amazing. He can see why she's amazing. And Andy, you sang from the kitchen, boring. <laughs> <laughs> I want to explain that. Was this not boring? Oh, I have mixed feelings about this hometown. Really? Because I think in terms of her relationship with Joey, I agree. It was boring. And it's because I just don't see them ending up as the final two. It just feels like it's so... These hometowns where you just know it's not the person. They feel like it's it's going through the motions. It's, it's bordering on sanctimonious. It's just like... Don't make me think this is something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just let it be nothing. Only to take it away from me. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, psych. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the football in Peanuts. Okay. Charlie Brown tries to kick the football. And yeah. Lucy, is it Lucy? Lucy the dick and Charlie Brown? Yeah, she's, she's the, the dick. dick. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with her? <laughs> 
<laughs> what about it? What, what's anyway, the it's where it's where she pulls the football away every single time oh. when he tries to kick it. Oh, so he falls. He falls, and he looks like an idiot. Oh, that is. I never understood why he kept falling for that. It happened like hundreds of times. But anyway, that's like the ultimate psych. Yes. That's what they're doing. They're pulling the f- the football of the hometown away from us. Yeah, but they're just lying. They're not even, it's not even that much of a psych. We know the psych's coming. We're actually, we are Charlie Brown and we're not going to kick that football. <laughs> so yeah, while I thought this hometown was a little boring in terms of their relationship, it wasn't boring at all for me in terms of watching Rachel sort of come to terms with her own feelings and just sort of accepting that yeah. maybe she's allowed to feel them. I, this, I loved this hometown this, in that sense. Absolutely. There's more about Rachel than about Rachel and Joey totally. or even her family necessarily. Yeah. Okay, so now we are in Becker, Minnesota for Daisy's hometown. They ride a horse-drawn carriage through the farm. And Andy, you said, look at him. He's always leaning in. Always. His body language is always sort of like ready for a kiss if and whenever she is game to kiss him. With everyone else, he goes to the middle. He goes he goes to the net. With okay. Daisy, he steps over the net. Okay. And what a musical score here. I said that oh, this incredible. music would be at home on the Elf soundtrack. Yes. They couldn't have picked better Christmas tree farm music. And as they feed alpacas, we were impossibly jealous that this was where she grew up. Andy, you said, honestly, if any girl I dated grew up on a Christmas tree farm, I would marry her. <laughs> would you not? It's like it's like the closest you can get to being an actual cartoon character. Her friends join and she says they all know she's been concerned with who would want to be with her after she lost her hearing. This experience has changed her perspective, even if it's not her at the end, but she hopes it is, that will stay with her forever. I thought this was so beautiful. She mm. was just so joyous here. I mean, talking about feeling feelings. She was just like beaming yeah. beaming talking to her friends about this experience and how happy she is and joey's gaze when she was saying all this mm. he was just looking at her and just soaking in her soaking in her joy you know you know it was like the, the 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 only thing i could compare the look in his eyes to is like watching a proud parent see their child perform a spot-on recital <laughs> Where every other kid sucks. <laughs> and they're like, my kid's better than the other yeah. kids. It always kind of cracks me up how that's just totally socially acceptable oh, to yeah. be that level of competitive when it's your kids and not yourself. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't necessarily with yourself be like, yeah, I'm better than everyone else. But when it's your kid, you can be but like, yeah, you were better than everyone else. It's a loophole. It's yeah. an extension of yourself. <laughs> like, that's not me. I'm not, I'm not conceited. I mean, that's, that's not me. That's some other person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is me. <laughs> They chat now. He says what she shared meant so much to him. And she says he has changed her perspective on life. She sees herself in a better light now. She's thankful for him. I actually welled up a bit here. Yeah, It was really beautiful. I did too. I I was a little ashamed. I was pulling a Rachel. I was a little ashamed of the the several times that I felt tears welling up. And I was like, what's going on, Andy? Why are there? Why do you have tears welling up? This is not tear welling up level stuff. I only cry when animals die. (laughs) It's a good name of a song. Is it a happy song or a sad song? Is that a minor key song or a major? I think that's one of those major key songs that's really sad. Yeah. You know, like sometimes it's sadder when a sad song is in major key. I only cry when animals die. I only cry when animals die. (laughs) Mm. That's how it ends. That's not good. Joey says that he's not afraid of the hard conversations when meeting her family. He sees so much in their relationship that he's not afraid to tell them what can be. Mm. Mm. Am I putting too much stock in that? A little tell there, a little tell. They meet her family now. What a beautiful moment here where Daisy asks her brother Harrison how college is going. And he answers and she's like, you sound like you for the first time since she got her cochlear implant. She said that voices, people don't really sound like themselves. So this is the first time she's heard her brother sound this like himself. This is a big moment for the bats. This is like a real, so this beautiful. Is a very meaningful moment of TV. Yeah. So Daisy chats with her mom now. And the gist here is she is afraid to let go of her emotions and feelings in this relationship. That's not normally how she is. And here we get a hint of Daisy's analytical side, which I, of course, I found very endearing. She says also maybe... She's been through such dark times. She's just so happy to be where she is now. Maybe she's just not spending much energy thinking, oh, I hope this boy likes me. 
I thought that was also that was so interesting that wow, she would also yeah. throw that angle into it. Yeah, you know, she's more neurotic than she appears. Yes. Like you'd expect growing up on a Christmas tree farm with alpacas. Yeah. Like there's zero neurosis. Yeah. There's a, you're the least neurotic person on earth. <laughs> But she's actually neurotic. Yes, endearingly so. I mean, come on. You got Christmas tree farm growing up with alpacas and neurotic? What more do you want? Well, I think a lot of her neuroticism comes from maybe going through what she's been through. Yes. You're like losing her hearing, being oh. so sick for so long. So you're saying before the hearing stuff, she was just Christmas farm tree person, like no neurosis. And the and the I, hearing loss. Oh, you're right. You're right. This shaped who she is. You're right. Can you imagine having both? You have both extremes. You have Christmas tree farm upbringing mm -hmm. and losing your hearing and all the other sicknesses she went through. Yeah. Both combined to make a very good stew. And I'm not saying that everyone, you know, I'm not, I don't want to make light of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that as far she as creating look. character, yes. you get both the like cartoon version yeah, yeah. and the dark version and you mix that and mmm. <laughs> Daisy chats with her father now. The gist here is that if she really wants this to work, she'll have to get past her fear of getting hurt. But if she knows she's falling in love, it's a no-brainer. That's what her father says. He says, shoot the shot. If you nail it, then it's all the marbles. Yeah. I had never heard of this all before. All the marbles. That's an old-timey expression. It's just like marbles, a game of marbles. Yeah. You're trying to win marbles. Yeah. So you just shoot your best shot to win all the marbles. I uh, mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh <laughs> I clearly have never played marbles. I was just at the tail end of marbles. Okay. Like I got marbles when they were just about to die. Okay. And I played some marbles. And? And I was so young, I don't really remember whether I won. I probably never won all the marbles. I was too young to beat anybody. Okay. But that's how you win marbles. You get all the marbles. Okay. And that's why the expression is there. So my familiarity with marbles is mainly from Squid Game. Oh, Probably yeah. the challenge, honestly. Yeah, yeah. So the goal with marbles is to just get all the marbles. You want all the marbles. It's one of the most like not complicated aphorisms. It's just like all the marbles. That's what you win when you win marbles. Yeah, yeah. But can you win? Let's say you end up with 10 marbles. The other person is five. You win because you had more marbles. No, you have to get all the marbles. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah, no one wins with more marbles. Oh. You win when you have all the marbles. You could have 100 marbles to the person's one marble. Yeah. And you could still lose. Wow. I may be talking to shit now. <laughs> okay. You sounded very confident. Uh. I think I'm right. We get a real idea of where Daisy gets her sense of humor from here, where her father says, it's not like you're going to lose your hearing over it. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. I thought this was brilliant. Hilarious. She laughed so hard at this. And I was like, damn. That's where she got her humor. Yeah. From. Spicy sense of humor. Yeah. Little spice. That's what I'm saying. They chat outside and in her ITM, Daisy says she would rather feel everything she feels than not at all. She says she's falling in love with Joey. She has been. She's just going for it. He's fairly poker faced through this. Andy, you insisted you could see that he was happy to hear it. Oh, I saw the glint. The glint. Yeah. There was one point where he even his smile dropped and he became pan faced. I think that's because he knew he was smiling too much. Oh. Yeah. You know what he was doing? He was looking down the line that he was about to shoot the winner mm. instead of looking the other way and he realized it so he changed his gaze shoot the winner tennis tennis analogy oh i don't get it when you're playing tennis and you're 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 about to shoot a shot that you want to be a winner yeah you look the other way you're not looking oh. at the place you're going to shoot it wow really bringing joey's tennis background into this recap andy yeah no i think it's important I think it shines through a lot. Squarespace, where a beautiful website is made. Well, that was nice. <laughs> a variation on a theme. Yeah, yeah, getting fancy. Squarespace. You know, I've been toying with Squarespace, which, by the way, is your number one destination to make a beautiful, gorgeous website, professional-looking website, all on your own. It's a scary, spooky, nighttime forest. Out there? Making a website. Oh, yeah. No one wants to go into that forest. <laughs> There's only a couple people, crazy mm -hmm. people. I don't know who these people are. Who sleeps in a forest overnight? <laughs> it's craziness. Okay, but I have been toying with Squarespace again. Last time it was DearShandy.com, and now I'm updating my singing website. And every time I'm tinkering in Squarespace anew, I'm like, ugh. Oh, Squarespace. You, know you it, thought of that too. Oh, that's new. Well, how great is that? Squarespace is like going into that scary forest with an outdoorsman and a tent. An outdoorsman? An outdoorsman. Mm. So Squarespace, in case you have been living under a rock, 
I assume you have not, but just in case, is your destination for all things websites. You can go, you can buy your URL, so your domain name through Squarespace. You can then pick a template from their amazing selection and you can filter down based on what you even intend to make this website about. And from there, they have features for everything you could possibly need. And we are talking booking through a calendar. You could do e-commerce. You could sell product. I love their different gallery options. Also, their blank page options, just because this is fresh on my mind because I was just working on it. I love how when you enter a blank page, it's not just like, here's a blank page. Have fun with that. No. How intimidating is that? No, with Squarespace, it's like, okay, yeah, you want a blank page? You can do that. You can totally have just a blank page if you want. But they're like, or do you want it to look like this? Like with a background here and an image here and like some text here. And then you can pick from different options. So you just have something to hang your hat on. It's so intimidating otherwise. You know, I can really feel your passion about Squarespace. Oh, I I love Squarespace. When I go to squarespace.com, a little part of me gets warm inside. I'm not kidding. (laughs) I'm just like, oh, I'm going somewhere where my hand will be held. Outdoorsman tent. (laughs) So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shandy to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shandy for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Here we get word watch one. Joey in his ITM says, I can see Daisy being my wife. And now, finally, we have Maria's hometown in Niagara Falls. They go on the Maid of the Mist. They do shots. They chat. He says last time her threatening to walk away was really tough for him. And she says she doesn't know what she was doing. She would have regretted it. He's the epitome of what she's looking for. It was hard to see him with other women. She says if she hadn't felt that way, it wouldn't have been real. Mm. And... I wrote, eh. Nah, wrong answer. <laughs> that is the wrong answer. Yeah. I didn't actually write, eh, because that's really hard to write. I wrote wrong answer. <laughs> How would you spell, eh? I tried. I literally tried. What was, what was, the, what was the attempt you made? There, was, there were E's and H's and N's and G's. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. I think it's like A, 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 E, E, N. <laughs> and... <laughs> That's wrong, too. Joey says his issue isn't her fear. It was the choice to leave based on that fear. I got to say, even this conversation, I was like, there's something Uh, missing. Yeah, I had a bad feeling during this conversation Mm -hmm. because even the way Maria was speaking, it would always kind of go. Her sentences were and like, I think I would have regretted it. You're the epitome of what I'm looking for. And it felt very interviewee. Yeah. And like they had spent time apart and he had spent he had spent time thinking about the fact that she had thought about leaving, which was extremely difficult for him, given his biggest fear. And she had spent time thinking about how much she oh, she actually likes him. And so they were coming at it from these opposite directions. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm literally just trying to, I'm thinking about how cute it was thinking about you spelling eh. <laughs> so go back a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying that this conversation, it felt like he was, like he had already taken a step towards the exit. Right. And she was taking a step closer to the entrance. Right. Like the whole dynamic of the relationship shifted. Her threatening to leave last week was such such a mistake. Such a, a mistake. miscalculation. And yeah. I hate to say this, because I really like Maria, but yeah. it was a calculation and it was a miss. Uh I don't know if it was here's the thing is Maria's so talking about emotional. She's, it was an emotional calculation. Yeah. There's a difference. Sometimes you do things that are like they're instinctive, yeah. but they're calculatedly instinctive. Oh. Like I don't think she was like, okay, I'm going to plan this. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to sit down with oh, Joey. I think she intended to gonna, leave. I don't think she intended oh, to okay. leave. No, 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 no. She didn't intend to leave. Okay. She intended to make him think she was leaving yeah. and see what his reaction was. And I respect that. It's a game. Uh-huh. Everyone's done it. Let's yeah. be honest. No one hasn't done that at some point in their life. Yes. Nobody. Unless they have married their high school sweetheart and they had a perfect okay. relationship. So it's fine. It's human. But I do think that she emotionally instinctively did that Mm -hmm. and it was programmed into her calculation yeah does that make sense (laughs) no i lost everything there that was total mess you know explain again you could do it you could do it you miss every shot you don't take wayne gretzky yeah canadian nice (laughs) it's the one 
back and forth thing. <laughs> and I like that. I love that about you. Okay. So, okay. My point is, is that she didn't go in there thinking I'm going to do this, uh-huh. but her emotions dictated that reaction. She's been there before. Yes. I think Maria's done that before. Yeah. And she went in there and her emotions just said, this is what we're doing. Yes. She didn't think her emotions told her what to do. Yes. And that happens to a lot of people, but that decision by her emotions was very bad. Yeah. Because all that did it was, was make her coffin. Joey say, you know what? I'm deciding between a bunch of great women who you all want to be here. You just made this so much easier for me. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. She gave him a gift. Yeah. It was interesting how the time they had apart, it's like he became more afraid based on her having done that. And she realized how much more she liked him based on almost having done that. And I, it was just, it felt disjointed. I felt this conversation didn't even feel like a conversation. Yeah. It felt like her undoing damage and he was already done. Well, the thing is at this point in the game, and it is a game, let's be honest, the lead is begging for reasons to let people yes. go. He's begging. He's like, please give me a reason mm-hmm. why it's going to be easier for me to let you yeah. go, please. And she was like, silver platter? Didn't he? He's even, like, I will have some of that. Thank you. Didn't it even feel like their dynamic was less fun yeah. throughout this whole date? Yes. Because she wasn't coming into their interactions from a place of power anymore. No. I feel like generally Maria has been sort of like, well, I'm figuring out if I like you. And now she came into it from this angle of like, I am trying to prove to you that I still want to be here because I like you so much. And he was kind of, you know, a little checked out. And I just felt like that Mm, that je ne sais quoi that they had on that one-on-one date in Montreal was not there anymore. No. The spark was gone. That fun spark. They still have a spark. I I, I wish I could sh- shake Maria before she went into that room yeah, and yeah, say, yeah. don't do this. Because I, I want to know what happens if she too, doesn't do that. Me too. It's like the choose your own adventure. I'm not saying that he would have picked her because I don't think he would have. If he was really going to pick Maria, I don't think her threatening to leave would have made the difference. Although, you know, that's been Joey's biggest fear. That's his thing, right? Yeah. It's not just something that he's afraid of, like every bachelor or bachelorette's afraid of being left at the altar or whatever. That's his thing. It's the theme. It could be the tagline to his season. And she knew that. And she's smart. Maria is very smart. Yes. But I'll tell you something. When you have a father like Maria's, Maria's father made it very clear that Maria is his life. Yes. Like that is it. Uh-huh. I was wondering about the other siblings. It was like, <laughs> kind of chop liver, but that's okay. I'm sure he loves them too. But the thing is, is Maria is like, she is had a life where her father is like you are the treasure yeah, yeah. i will never i will put my body on a railroad track yeah, yeah. i will throw myself in boiling water anything you want yes. it's yours and now this guy's like choosing between her and two other women yeah she's like this is not how it works yeah and and i understand that totally that's how she's trained and and i just wish she could she could have pulled that back yeah <laughs> she reveals here now that she's never brought anyone home and this does not seem to land well with joey and as itm he says how has she gone this far in life without opening up to someone and showing this side of herself oh man i gotta I gotta hand it to joey here <sighs> me too this is good analysis this is a good smart read of the situation you know a lot of people would have been a lot of guys would have been like wow i feel so honored I'm yeah the first guy and he this said, is great he said part of me is you know like honored yeah. but the other side too it would be a bit of a red flag if you were really serious but a lot of guys wouldn't see that they would think more internally they'd be like wow i'm the first guy i win in the evening they eat stuffed peppers your favorite andy (sighs) there is no first of all (laughs) i don't understand stuffed peppers there's no thing that should be stuffed less than a pepper (laughs) and can i tell you something else i love cooked peppers and i generally use i usually like the things that peppers are stuffed with. yes but you put them together i don't want any part of it who likes stuffed peppers i like stuffed peppers why what is it you like about stuffed peppers it's just sort of a fun texture combination to have something enclosed by something soft like that. Like the pepper's not usually on the outside like that. It's sort of like having like a bread bowl for your soup. You know, you're kind of like, oh, this is fun. It's just different. It's novelty. I'm not saying it's what I want every night, but I'm like, oh, the edge is pepper. I don't accept this no. answer. Okay. No. Maria and her friend Brittany talk now. The gist here is Brittany knows Maria well and that she has a tendency to push people away out of fear of getting hurt. That definitely seems to be the theme of everyone this yeah. season. Joey and her father talk now. Her father says Maria's his angel. 
his princess. Since the day he almost lost her, they've been inseparable. And that was when she was one. So that's yeah, her that's entire life. Time. He says, Joey telling Maria he's falling for her. If he says it to others, it doesn't mean anything. Mm. Joey says Maria told him that she's falling for him. And he's being very intentional. He doesn't want to say the same thing to four people. I got to say something about this conversation. There was a dynamic shift where Joey took control of this conversation. It started out with her father being like, she's my angel. She's my princess. If you're telling other women these things, then it means nothing. Maria's the shit, you know, that kind of thing. And Joey was like, well, actually, you know, Maria's the, the one who's told me she's falling for me. I haven't said it back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You know what this is like? What? This is like when you watch a great tennis player facing a guy. This is like the new guy with the big serves, like 140 mile per hour serve. Okay. He just smash his serves. Like no one can return these serves. Okay. And the great tennis player understands how to do it. Yeah. He just understands. Take a step back. Let let the serve come to you. Okay. Just be the serve. And they always return well. Yeah. And he knew that he was facing a great server. Yes. Right out of the gate. Yeah. He's like, this guy has a 140 serve mm -hmm. and I know how to return this. And he turned it on him. He and did. And now the guy with the 140 serve is like, oh my God, I don't even have my serve. I got nothing now. <laughs> he became the controller of this conversation because I think her father went into it being like, well, I'm Maria's father. Maria's yeah. my princess. He's Al Pacino in Godfather 3. Yes. I mean, let's face it. He's Al Pacino in yeah, Godfather that's, 3. I mean, they were definitely yeah. leaning into that. And Joey, without being anywhere near obnoxious or inappropriate about it, I, I feel like he really took the reins. It he was put him in his place without being disrespectful. No, yeah. And knowing that he wasn't picking Maria. Well, he does ask for a hypothetical blessing here. Yeah, but he does that because he knows that that's part of the routine. <laughs> Well, I it's mean, like shaking hands after you beat a guy in tennis. Well, we don't really care. A lot of stock ends up being put in that because when Maria and her father talk, he says she's glowing. He hasn't seen that in a long time. He says Joey's a good guy. You can put your guard down. I mean, really, Joey mm, won him yeah. over. He tells her Joey asked for his blessing and she puts a lot, like I said, a lot of stock into that. She's a huge reaction to that. And she's like, I don't think you're supposed to tell me that. I thought this was so cute. Yeah, that was really cute. But also, uh, it's kind of she like... The, she didn't read that right. Yeah, well, I feel like she yeah, maybe hasn't studied up on the show enough. Yeah, yeah, but that was super cute. It was super cute. Yeah. It felt very fourth wall. She was like, I yeah. don't think you're supposed to tell me that. Yeah. I felt like she thought she might have won right there. Yes. It was cute. I and felt bad for her. Too. I didn't want her to think that. And me too. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Um... I was just really amazed at how Joey won her father over because I think her father went into this not wanting to be won over yeah. and Joey like challenged him a bit and then he her father was just like a total softy. Yeah, now, now there's a hit out on Joey though. That's the problem. <laughs> they watched home videos outside while her family creepily watches from the window. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a perfect moment for like a stutter close up where it's just like tum, 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 and then you just see his eyes like... <laughs> They chat outside now. She says her father is saying, let her guard down to give it her all. It meant everything. There's a lot of buildup here to what seems like a, I'm falling in love. And Joey's expression almost seems to expect it. But she balks and says, I appreciate you being oh, here. Oh, Maria. Uh, Maria. I just met a girl named Maria. And nothing will something. <laughs> I don't know any of the words uh, to this song. It's beautiful, Auntie. I, wait, Maria sounds a little bit like Moon River. Maria. Moon River. Wait, uh, Maria? No. Oh. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> So finally, we have the airport hangar rose ceremony of legend. In her ITM going into it, Maria says that she still has a chance to tell him she's falling in love. She has remorse over not doing it. She'll have time. Oh, wait. If she goes home, she's screwed. <laughs> Andy, you said Kelsey, Daisy, Maria, that order. I bet $10,000. <laughs> I really should have bet. Right before the rose ceremony, Maria says, Joey, can I talk to you for a second? She says she wants no regrets. She's falling in love with him no matter what happens. And Andy, you said this hurt her. She should not no. have done this. You said it was too businesslike and won't change a thing. No, you can't just tell someone matter of factly, oh, by the way, I, I meant to say yes, I loved you. Yes. Like uh, that doesn't, if anything, that's going to. This was another poor calculation. Poor calculation. Yeah. It, this is the kind of thing that has to be said in the moment. Yeah. And like I said, because the, it feels like Maria's coming from this underdog place throughout this whole episode. She knows. You know who knows 
the best that she did the wrong thing? Yes, totally. She returns and Rachel goes, what was that about? And Maria goes, oh, I don't know. And Maria's like, you don't know, but you asked him to talk. And this, uh, this little interaction, yeah. I enjoyed so much. It was so juicy because it showed such a difference in these, two, like we talked about Rachel and her feeling feelings and her emotions. Like she would never do this while right. Maria just sort of does what she wants, yeah. right? She, she's very emotional and very feelings based. And then so versus someone like Rachel, you can't even imagine a world in which Rachel would at the beginning of a rose ceremony that they're all standing around for a very long time for which, that she would be like, oh, Joey, can I talk to you for a second? She's much more in control of not only her own feelings, but how they affect the people around her. But also Rachel hasn't taken many risks no. to get to the point where she would need to pull Joey aside it's at a rose so ceremony. so true. So true. So at this rose ceremony, Daisy gets called first. Andy, you said, damn it. He would have lost 10K. 10K. Then Kelsey and then Rachel, meaning Maria, goes home. Andy, you said you were not shocked. No, I didn't want to believe it. But Mm -hmm. in my heart, I knew this was a real possibility. Yeah, I was in denial, I think, for a lot of this episode watching it. But I had a sinking feeling based on the the interactions just between Joey and Maria, just one on one throughout this episode where I was like, you saw him. He was over it after that hanger aside yes yeah he was like okay i, I got it. yeah 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 you yeah. love me i got it okay let's yeah, get yeah. back to this <laughs> you love me i got it oh, yeah. Check. okay so they chat he says they've had a bumpy road he's fought for them every time he went into hometowns very open she said everything he needed to hear he was doing his best to get there but it would be dishonest to move forward with the doubts that he has and he says it feels wrong in some ways mm-hmm. overall though he does not seem that torn up about this i think he's frustrated I her. think he's he really is like I think there's some love there. I agree. Yeah, if there wasn't, he would have been nicer. Mm. That's the interesting part for me. That is such an interesting point. Yeah, he's like annoyed with her. He's yeah. like, look, I tried. It's like a breakup where you're kind of where you really care about the person and you're like, you're angry. Yeah. Like, why didn't this work out? Like, I really liked this. Yes. So, you know. <laughs> no, that's a good point. The power to Maria. Yeah. Like, Maria was a strong contender here. And in the end, she kind of was hung up by her own petard oh yeah she i believe could have been final too i agree andy you said he took the friend yeah we've seen this before right where the friend gets to the third spot oh yeah because he doesn't want to hurt the person who he actually has more of a romantic connection with and deal with the family situation there he wants to spare the real emotional connection Mm -hmm. and bring the friend along because that's lower stakes yeah lower hanger stakes Huh? Huh? Hanger well, stick? Why? I don't get it. Lower hanger stakes? I don't get They're it. They're in the hanger and it's lower stakes. Hanger stick? <laughs> I don't know why I fought for that so hard. I, I don't know. Just couldn't resist. Anyway, my point is, is that that's a lower stakes move. Uh-huh. Always bring the friend. Wasn't Rodney? Rodney was like that on Michelle season. Rodney was the friend that got dragged yeah, along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Andy, that brings us to your A game. Who is your winner? Daisy. Okay. Daisy always expresses herself fully, Mm -hmm. even when she's protecting herself. Yeah, even when she's not sure, even when she's like, I'm not in love with you yet, she expresses that too. She expresses the whole thing. Yes. Even when Joey doesn't know where he stands with Daisy, he knows exactly how he doesn't know where he stands with Daisy. Totally. Okay, Andy, that brings us to our word watch. There was one- Wife! And how many correct guesses? 74. Okay. And our winner is Sarah JK1. Congratulations. You are the winner of $100 to spend at one of my all-time favorite Etsy shops, Furano Studio. Congratulations. Please email us by this Friday at midnight to claim your prize. And Andy, what is the word for next week? Heartbroken. Ooh. What about heartbreak? Nope. Heartbroken. Mm -hmm. Okay. Broken heart? Nope. Okay. Heartbroken. That's right. Okay. So if you would like to join in the Shandy Word Watch Fun and have a chance to win a prize, then you can guess the number of times you predict the word heartbroken will be uttered in episode nine. So that's the three to two episode. Not women tell all. Right. No women tell all. Okay. That's just the three to two. 
Correct. Okay. So you will do so by guessing with the numeral of the number of times you think it will be uttered. Do not write out the word of the number. You use the numeral. So if you think six, then you put a six. Please do so by commenting either below this YouTube video or over on the Instagram post for this recap. Do not DM us. Do not email us. And if you guess correctly, you will be entered in a draw and then one name will be plucked and that person will win. Same prize as last week, $100 to spend at one of my all-time favorite Etsy shops, Furano Studio. Such a great prize. Literally all my rings, except for my engagement ring, are from there. And my necklace is also from there today. So be sure to enter by this Friday at midnight. And shall we move on, Andy? Let's do it. Okay. So in our predictions, who do you have in first? Daisy. Same. And in second? Kelsey. Same. (laughs) And so we both believe Rachel's going home next week. I don't think we need to explain any of this because we talked about it throughout this entire recap. How many people do you think, if you if if you had to split the whole Bachelor Nation, think Kelsey's the one? I think a lot. Like more than fifty percent. Yeah. Wow. Well, I just based on the comments, like people were kind of upset at us for not for thinking Kelsey was a little behind last week. Uh, If if she wins, wins whatever. Uh huh. Um. I really missed something here. Yeah. I'll accept that. And the thing about Kelsey A is if she does win, I think Daisy will make a phenomenal bachelorette. And if Daisy wins, I think Kelsey will make a phenomenal bachelorette. we are. Either way, we win next season. Yes. Totally. If Maria's bachelorette, well, I win in more ways than one because I get apparently a fanfare of an I told you so, (laughs) which I still want. (laughs) In general, the women this season have been so great. Even in this episode, like Rachel seeing her with her family, I was like so invested. I just... It's just been a great season, even if, you know, like most hometowns, you know, it was slightly sleepy. I love being proven wrong. Me too. I love saying, oh, this is going to be a sleeper season Mm -hmm. and being proven wrong. I love it. Oh, my God. It's the biggest. It's the only time I really enjoy not getting the I told you so because I lose if I get the I told you so. Yes. If I say the season's going to suck and it sucks, what do I get out of that? Nothing. Yeah, great. And I told you so. Can I take that to the bank? No. Can you? You should be able to take that to the bank. (laughs) You should, but no, sadly. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok, leave us Apple and Spotify, podcast ratings and reviews, tell your friends and generally do all the things you do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. Dear Shandy. Um. I thought it was a bug. A wingless butterfly. <laughs> <laughs>